So what ha- what hasn't been said about Ursula Andress, one of the most beautiful and luminous actresses of the 60s and 70s? She attempted to go double mainstream by doing a Hammer movie in 1965 called She. Now, a film is in a scope based on the 1887 novel by <coughs> H. Ryder Haggard, directed by Robert Day and, and, uh, and featured... Peter Cushing, Bernard Cribben, John Richardson, Rosanda Montrose, and Christopher Lee as co-stars. The film was a big box office international success and led to a 68 sequel, The Vengeance of She with Alinka Barova in the title role. Now, after receiving honorable discharges from the British Army in Palestine in 1918, Professor Holly, young Leo Vinci, and her orderly Job embarked on an expedition to a previously unexplored region of Central East Africa. They discovered a lost city of Kuma after Leo discovers a mysterious map revealing the city's whereabouts. The lost realm is ruled by Aisha, who is also known as She Who Waits and She Who Must Be Obeyed. Hmm. Aisha is a beautiful immortal queen who believes Leo is the reincarnation of her former lover, the priest Kelly Kalei Kretz, whom she had killed 2,000 years before when she found him in the intimate embrace of another woman. It was she who met with Leo in Palestine, giving him the map to Kuma, and urging him to travel there. Leo is filled with dogged determination to do so, as he sees visions of Aisha beckoning to him with outstretched arms. After Leo has recovered from the journey to Kuma, Aisha persuades him to battle bathe in a ceremonial fire that she had bathed in 2,000 years before, by which she gained her immortality. One can bathe in the flame only when it's turned blue, which it does rarely for short periods of time when astronomical, uh, uh, astronomical events coincide. Leo would then himself be immortal, kind of reverse vampire. Meanwhile, Aisha's army is attacked by her enslaved tribesmen, the Amhager, who live outside Kuma. Ready to rebel against the queen's cruel tyranny, they are incited to revolt by their leader, Hoviad, a citizen of Kuma, whose daughter, Eustain, dared to fall in love with Leo while nursing him back to health after his perilous journey to the city. The queen is jealous uh, and has her cremated alive in the open molten lava pit, before her throne. Her ashes are poured out in front of her outraged father, who cries out to Amhiger for revenge. Although poorly equipped, the Amhiger overcome Aisha's army. Now, Leo himself is about to enter the blue ceremonial fire, where Bilia, Aisha's high priest, demands to be allowed to enter to gain immortality as well, since he has served the queen unselfishly for many years. He is refused, so he pushes Leo aside in a scuffle that leaves Leo knocked out, opening his way to enter the blue flames. Aisha kills him with a javelin to prevent this. Now, to overcome Leo's reluctance, Aisha takes him by the hand and leads him to the blue flame. Upon entering, Leo becomes immortal, but Aisha's immortality is taken away, and she ages 2,000 years and minutes, dies, and crumbles into dust. Holly and Job have managed to get to Leo through the uprising, and Holly urges them to go once again to the fire to remove his immortality since the second time into the flames would do this as it is done to Aisha. Unfortunately, the flame turns yellow again, barring entry. The film ends with despondent Leo vowing to wait for the fire to turn blue again, that he might end the prospect of spending an eternity alone. Now, uh, produced by Michael uh, Karyas, Again, H. Ryder Haggard wrote the story, She, History of Venture, uh, Center of Photography by Harry Waxman, edited by James Needs and Eric Boyd Perkins, music by James Bernard, Seven L Arts was also involved in this production, Warner Pathy, a UK distributed with MGM in the States, came out uh, 18th of April, 65 in the UK, 9th of June, 65 in the US. Running time was 106 minutes, uh, budget was only 323000 pounds, but the box office was tremendous. Uh, over 1 million emissions in Spain, a quarter million in France, and 1.7 million in rentals in Canada and the States. You know, because the novel, not say it was completely in the public domain, but because of this, the refilming of the H. Ryder Haggard novel, which has been lensed previously in 1908, 1911, 1916, 1917, 1925, and 1935, was the idea of Kenneth Hyman of Seven Arts, who had a long-running relationship with Hammer Films. Anthony Hines commissioned a script from John Temple Smith, and the lead role was assigned to Andress, known mostly at the time for a key role in the James Bond film Dr. No, as one of the first Bond girls. She would thus become the first Hammer film to be built around a female 
star. No pun intended. Hammer pitched a project to Disney, who turned it down. Hines then arranged for Berkeley Mother to write a script, but the project was turned down again by Universal and then by Joseph E. Levine and American International Pictures. Hines passed it on to Michael Carras, who got David T. T. Chandler to rewrite the script. Carras succeeded in getting the film financed to MGM with triple the usual budget for a Hammer film. The film was announced in May 64, although Seven Arts had helped finance several Hammer films. This was the first one they had produced together. Now, John Richardson was cast after being spotted by Ray Stark of Seven Arts. Now, principal photography commenced in southern Israel's Nijev Desert on August 24, 64, with scenes also shot in MGB, MGM's Elstree Studios near London, when Hammer's Bray Studios proved to be too small for the big project. It was, at the time, the most expensive film Hammer had made, but on release, it was a hit both North America and Europe. Although the studio was pleased with the look of Ursula Andress in the film, as lit by Harry Waxman in costume by Carol Toms and Roy Ashton, they found her Swiss and German accent to be outputting and had her entire part redubbed by an actress called Nikki van der Zeel, who had dubbed her in Dr. No. She wasn't there for her voice, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're saying. Now, the New York Times critic Bosley Crowther wrote of the film, it lacks style, sophistication, humor, sense, and above all, a reason for being, since it isn't even as good, excepting that is in color, as the last re- remake of She Done with Helen Gog- Gogan in 35. The British Lessing magazine, the Radio Times, gave the film three out of five stars, observing that Ursula Andress acquits herself better than you might expect, and concluding that the African backdrops are easily matched by Swiss-born Andres's own brand of exotic beauty, and while there's plenty to criticize, there's also much to enjoy. Now, uh, the Sandhal Bergman did a version of She in 1984 uh, with a, a rejig of the plot uh, in, involving uh, uh, like a nuclear war. And that, uh, Sandhal Bergman, of course, our great lady from uh, Conan the Barbarian, was pretty well all her show. Um, the uh, the movie itself wasn't as good, uh, but it was one of Neil Gaiman's first reviews for his uh, print magazines. Now, the Vengeance of She, if you can find it as well, it's 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 quite uh, quite in common. It bears little in common to nineteen uh, five novel Aisha: The Return of She by Ryder Haggard, and again uh, made by Amber as a loose sequel to the 1865 film She. Now, uh, that wasn't as uh, successful. Actually, it was pretty well a box office bomb, and, you know, better better not to talk about it, as we like to say. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the story of She. Well, when She came out, a lot of people really didn't know what it stood for. But, you know, uh, but it kind of caught on who is the leader of your people, She. And She was supposed to be like a play on the femininity of the word. But she can be used in different contexts. She is coming. She will fight against you. She is longing for you. She will be there for you. She rules us. So you see all the uh, the plot points. But I would never expect Christopher Lee and uh, Peter Cushing in a movie with Ursula Andress. Uh, you know, strange strange bedfellows. Uh, no pun intended. It would have been nice to have an American in the cast, like a, a Robert Wagner or somebody else that was more recognizable. I think they were one star away from a $5 million dollar box office, give or take. So ladies and gentlemen, that's our latest on our Hammer Film Reviews. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share, or super chat. And don't forget, requests are always, always appreciated and always highly considered. Thanks for listening. Bye.